Good morning. What a great privilege to stand before you to bring the word of the Lord. And I want to thank God for Pastor Tim, whom God is using in this place to be a great blessing to us. And as I testify here some weeks ago, since we came in in January, we have been so blessed receiving the word of the Lord, enjoying this atmosphere of God's presence. Our lives has been enriched. Every day we come here, we are revived. And that is how the church should be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now looking at this boy, I call myself the boy of God. I don't know whether you have that expression here. But you know, in 1893, some crazy young people left the shore of the United States to go to Africa. And they were young, and everybody told them not to go because they told them you are going to die. When they reached the coastal city called Lagos of Nigeria, they met other people there, and they were told, you can't go to the northern part of Nigeria. That maybe your grandchildren will be able to go, but you, you cannot. But those young people said, we heard from God. God wants to save those who are living in darkness. And they took the risks. And they came to the part of the country where my, my, my grandparents were. And they brought the gospel there. And about 100 years now, just one church that God led them to start, just one church, is all over Nigeria, is in many parts of African countries. We are talking about 10 million people who go to church and worship Jesus because those young people took that risk. And that's why, it, you see, as we came here, I see Pastor Tim going to Africa, and some of you here going to Africa. You may think that is, oh, how can we reach this great number of people? Whatever you do for God, you never know the extent of it. And I know that Thomas Kent, one of them, Roland Beham, and Walter Gowans, if, they, if God should allow them to see me preaching here today, they will have never imagined it, that the gospel they took there, they will see the fruit coming to this land to preach. And that's why I see this as a great opportunity to stand before you today. This land, this country is a blessed country. God has planned it in his own way. And as Pastor Tim has taken us for the past two Sundays, talking about the outliers, people that dare to be different, that is our calling as children of God, to be different. We are different. We are unique. The Bible says our citizenship is of heaven. Hallelujah. We are just walking through time and to fulfill and to accomplish the purpose of God. We know where we are going. And that's why everything we do, we are concerned, we are thinking, we are intentional that the glory of God must be made manifest. The glory of God must be seen. The glory of God must be expressed through our lives. 
And as we look at 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 3, it gave us a very strong word there that should give us confidence as we walk through this life. Can we have it on the screen? Verse 3, we take it again. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. I titled today's message, Outliers Displaying the glory of God. Outliers that display God's glory on the earth. Amen. I want you to ask the person next to you, if there's anybody close to you, ask the person, do you know you are supposed to display God's glory? Just ask the person, your wife or your husband or your son around you. Just, just ask, do you know you're supposed to display God's glory? He has called us to his own glory and excellence. Our life is meant to emanate, to shine forth, to bring forth the glory of God on this earth. And that is God's intention right from Genesis chapter 1. That's why God said, I have created you in my image, in my likeness. It was something that went wrong. That the Bible says in Romans chapter 2. 3 verse 23, that we fall short of that glory. Romans chapter 3 verse 23. We fall short. We came short of that glory. But God's intention is every day as you wake up and you step out of your bed, you are that vessel, you are that container, you are that medium that God wants to keep showing his glory. When sin came in and interrupted the process, God didn't stop. His plan must still come to pass. What he intended must still happen. And that's why Jesus came. And I tell you the truth, there has been a big battle. Just like it happened in the Garden of Eden. If you read Genesis chapter 3, Verse 1, you will never imagine that it was the devil. Look at what the scripture said. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? Is there, is there any place there that mentioned the devil? It only said that the serpent was what? Was more crafty. Now until you come to Revelation and other scriptures in the Bible, that you get to know what was really happening there, there was an enemy that doesn't want us to show forth the glory of God through our lives. That has caused all the troubles, all the confusion, all the challenges in the world because he doesn't want the glory of God to show through our lives. He lost it and he wants us not to have it. The devil is angry with us. He's bitter in his heart. What he lost, what he wanted, we have it. And he came and deceived the woman. Can we have that revelation? Look at what the scripture says. 12 verse 9. And the great dragon was thrown down. That ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan. The deceiver of the whole, of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down to him. Who is the serpent? The devil. And I tell you, the same thing is still happening today in our time. It's still deceiving the world. It's still deceiving the world. And as we look at Second Peter, 
As Peter told us of what we have in Christ Jesus, that God has given us everything. Now he went further in verse 12 of chapter 1 to say, look, we are eyewitnesses of what we are telling you about Jesus. We were there at the Mount of Transfiguration when the glory came upon him and his body shone with light. And we saw Elijah and Moses appear. Men that have lived thousands of years ago appeared with Jesus. P Peter said, we were there, we saw it. We were eyewitnesses. And in verse 16, he said, For we did not follow cleverly devised meat when we made known to you the power the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we are eyewitnesses of his majesty. Do you know why Peter is talking this way? Why he's saying this? It's because the deceiver, since their time and to this time, he has been out in the world deceiving people, telling them that the Bible, the word of God is not true. That the Bible it's not authentic. That the Bible has many errors in it. That no, why do you need to read the Bible? Why do you need to believe the Bible? Why do you need to live by the Bible? That is the lies the deceiver has been selling out there through different forms, in schools, in the media, in all kinds of things that he can get people to hear, to listen. The same deceiver. Someone sent me a statistic last week in the United States, and I was shocked that only 6%, I don't know who did that, but that only 6%, a doctor here in the U US sent it to me, that only 6% of Americans believe and live their life by biblical worldview. And I was shocked. And I remember Pastor Tim said it here one of the Wednesday during prayer. He said that, that, that when, when, when statistic was taken, that less than 50% Americans agree that they are Christians in any way, in any form. Less than and I remember my friend here said when she was in school, it was 80%, isn't it? But it has been dropping and dropping. And do you know what the enemy is doing? Since in the 50s, it has been an attack on the scriptures. The moment you can doubt the scriptures, then you have nothing to believe. You have nothing to live by. You have nothing to stand on is the old trick of Satan, just like he met Adam and Eve in the garden and told them, did God say it? He questioned what God said. And today, there's a lot of questions being raised against the Bible. And the purpose is to make sure you don't believe it. You don't live by it. But you know the greater danger? What is the devil after? So that the glory of God will not shine through our lives, will not manifest. What is God's glory? God's glory is God's character, God's wealth, God's beauty, God's majesty, God's grace. Everything that God is, is God's glory. And God is happy, is glad to share his glory with us. To make us partaker of that glory. When the scripture says we are partaker of his divine nature. It's so that we can manifest his glory. And that glory keep manifesting in us. Through the activity of the word of God. If you reject the word. If you look down at the word of God. You have denied yourself. The manifestation of God's word in your life. Let's look closely at 2 Peter 
Now, Paul, Peter gave two reasons in this text why you should accept the word of God. He gave two. One, you see it in verse 16 to 18, where he said, we were eyewitnesses. In verse 18, he said, we ourselves had this very voice born from heaven, for we are with him on the holy mountain. He said, I was there. I saw it. But he didn't stop there. When you go to verse 19, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 19, he gave another more evidence that you should believe the scripture, you should accept the scripture as the word of God. He said, and we have something more sure, the prophetic word, to which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamb shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. Hallelujah. At closing, we'll touch that second part. But you see, he said, something more sure, the prophetic word, the word of God. And when you read further, he explained this word. He said, knowing this first verse 20 of all, that no prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. That is the Bible. He's talking about the Bible. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Peter is saying, I was there as an eyewitness, but see, the word of God has been there before I came, even before my own experience. The whole Bible, you know, when Peter was writing, Genesis to Malachi was there already. It was written by the prophet. They wrote it at different times, hundreds of years between them. Some of them, thousands of years between them. And every one of them heard from God. And what God said, they wrote it down. And that's why when you go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, he said, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true to make us realize what is wrong in our life. It corrects us when we are wrong. It teaches us to do what is right. And the last, the following verse says, so that he can make you the man God wants you to be. Who does God want us to be? He wants us to be people that display his glory. People like him. And how are we made that way? By his word. Do you now understand why the devil come against the word? Why he doesn't want you to believe the word? Why he doesn't want you to accept the word? This Bible is not just people that just sat down and wrote fiction. And just wrote, wrote their imagination. It's not a myth like you heard of the Greek myths. Mythologies of the Greeks. Amazing stories they wrote about their gods and what they did. That is not the Bible. The people that wrote it, it wasn't their idea. They weren't planning to write it. All of them were people like us that God just grabbed and drew them to himself. And I believe, and I pray this morning, God will grab somebody in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, like the song we sang, he rescued us. It's a rescue mission. That was their stories. They were ordinary people living their lives. And God came and took hold of their lives. They weren't intending and planning to write anything. The Spirit of God came upon them and God said, write these things down. If you go to 1 Peter chapter 1, the Bible tells us there that they even didn't understand fully what they were writing. When they were writing about the coming of Jesus, can you imagine somebody writing about the coming of Jesus thousand years before Jesus came? He didn't understand fully what he was writing. But because God said right, they wrote it down. And when Jesus came, exactly what they wrote, that is what happened. And that's why 
The apostles, speaking in Acts of Apostles, they said, what has been written is what they carried out by killing Jesus. It's what God has planned right from the beginning of the world. Actually, like we are studying our study group this morning, it backdated even before the creation of the world. The Bible is a preview of what God wills, what God intends, even before he created this world. That's why the word of God is true, is genuine. That's why you can count on it. It's beyond this life. That's why Jesus said, not one dot of this world will pass away. Everyone will be what? Will be fulfilled. It is eternal. You see, our human life, our scientists, our philosophers are trying to find out something. They find out something today. Tomorrow another person will come and say, no, it's not like that. We have gotten a higher, you know, reasoning has taken place. Another research has come out. That is what happened in the world every day. Oh, let's just remind ourselves of the COVID issue. How did it happen? Every day they are coming out with what? New research. That is the human limitation. That is the human level. That is how we operate. We are finding out. We are trying to discover. But when you, you see the word of God, you don't bring it on that level. No, no. That is the deception of Satan. We want to equal our thinking, our reasoning, our ability to research. We bring it to the level. No, 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 no. It is an eternal word. It is what God has decided even before he created this world. It is forever. Amen. You can trust it. And it's the same word that says, I have created you, Isaiah 43, that I will show my glory through you. How am I going to do it? As you accept my word, my word work in your life. It will produce my glory through your life. And that's why that verse 19 is very, very important as we round up this morning. It's very important. Second Peter chapter 3, chapter, chapter 1, verse 19. He said, pay attention. Pay attention. That is our participation. That is our involvement. Pay attention as to a lamb. Now, you see, many a times as the Bible communicates to us, it uses what we know our experiences, the things we know, so that we can understand what God is trying to communicate to us. He said, as to a lamb shining in a dark place. It's telling you what the word of God will do for you, will do in you, will do in your life. He said, it's as, as a lamb shining in a dark place. So the word of God in your heart is. And you know what happened in the morning when the sun comes up, isn't it? What happened to darkness? Disappear. It just goes. Whew. Hallelujah. When you pay attention to God's word, every darkness in you, every darkness around you, every darkness in this world gives way. But if you don't pay attention to God's word, you live in the darkness that this world is in. This world is in darkness. You know, you, you think the sun that comes out is okay. No. The works of darkness, the Bible talks about the works of darkness. What people do, evil things. Betrayer, hurt, wickedness, sinful behaviors. And that's why when Jesus came, he said, I am the light of the world. He said, anyone that follow me will not walk in darkness. John chapter 8 verse 12. Jesus is the word of God. John chapter 1 verse 1. The word became flesh and dwell among us. If you accept Jesus, you are accepting the word of God. If you accept the word of God, you are accepting Jesus. And he said, the word is the light of life. What Peter is taking us and describing and explaining here is see. He said, look at 
when Jesus said, I am the light of this world, if you take the word of God in you, the light of God begins to shine inside of you. You remember Psalm 119, verse 105? The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. If you take the word of God as light, as lamp in you, it will keep rising, it will keep shining, it will keep. And I tell you the truth the things you don't know now, the things you are not clear about now, the things you may not understand now, just pay attention to the word. Light will come. Hallelujah. And in Ephesians chapter 1, Paul prayed a prayer for the Christians. And I'm going to pray that prayer for us today. He said, I pray that your heart will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. He said, I pray your heart be filled, be flooded with light. How? Through the word. Don't allow anybody or any system or anything in this world to deny you participating in the, using the word of God. Take it to your heart every day. The Bible says, let all men be liars and God alone be true. That is how we live as outliers on this earth, as unique people, as different people, by living by the word of God. I was thinking of this trip to Tanzania next week. And I was asking myself, this is a country I've never been to. What is giving me confidence to go? Then I hear the Spirit of God said, it's my word. It's my word. You can count on my word that I said I'm going with you. And that is what happens every day in our lives. The devil will say all kinds of things. The world will say all kinds of things. You ask yourself, what is God saying? Where is my light coming? What light, what understanding am I having? The moment you hear what God says, you will no longer be in darkness. You will not be confused. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God walks through his word. If you want to see God does anything, he does it through what he says. Look at Genesis chapter 1. God says, and the world was created. Anything God does, he does it by speaking. That's why I must keep hearing him so that I can keep seeing his work in my life. If I want God to be involved with me, if I want to see the work of God in my life, then I must keep hearing what God is saying. Because when God speaks, that is his action. Hallelujah. That's why you must listen to him. That's why his word must never be taken away from you. Stay on it. Meditate on it. Think about it through the day. When you go kneel down to pray, oh, say, Lord, speak to me. Because when you open your eyes to see the wonderful things in his word, then you will see his activities in your life. You will see his activities around your life. Hallelujah. I will call the musician as they come forward. We are going to pray. We are going to ask the Lord to protect our mind. To protect us from the lies out there. That the devil is selling out there. That we want to take our mind and our heart away from God's word. I want you to bow your head while you are seated. And I want you to pray. Say, Lord, protect me. Lord, help me to be wise. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord, not to give in to the lies that are out there. Ask for that divine help. Ask for that divine help. Pray for your family. Pray for your children. Pray for anybody that you know that they will not be deceived. The deceiver is out there. 
He wants to look down on the word of God. Just take this moment and ask the Lord. And if you are here this morning, you want to surrender your life to Jesus. You have heard the word of the Lord come to you that God wants to show his glory through your life. And he does that through the activities of his word in your life. You want to open yourself and say, Lord, I accept your word. I want you to show your glory through me. It's an easy commitment. Just say yes to Jesus wherever you are. Lift up your hands wherever you are and we're going to pray with you. Just lift up your hands wherever you are. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. I believe your word. Thank you because you died for me and today I'm safe. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for this gift of salvation. Let's rise on our feet.